Right, so Peter and Diane, what are your key tips for students for doing well in Studies of Religion HSC papers? I think it's really important that uh, to do well, it starts right at reading time. So you have five minutes of reading time, use that time wisely. Uh, I would start by reading the questions in section three. That is the section where you have a choice. It is an essay response that you have to plan, construct, write. So give, your, give yourself and, and your brain some time to unpack those questions. So I would start with section three, read that. Read and make a choice, read section two. Um, in, in the paper and then that will confirm that you've made the right choice in section three. If you were a two unit student then I would go to section four because that's your other essay, religion and peace and often there usually there is a, a choice um, involved in that question as well in terms of the number of re religions that you may write about etc. Then I would go to your five mark response um, and the, if you have time, by all means, then read the multiple choice. I always tell my students that in multiple choice, the answer's on the page. There's uh, not the thinking process involved in that that there is in constructing um, an essay. So use those five minutes uh, wisely and um, it will really set you up for a successful um, strategy moving into then writing the responses. Once you've made that choice then in relation to section two and section three, it's really important, and all of the questions in fact, that you read the question carefully. What is the verb telling you to do? Making sure that you understand what's required within the question. If there's stimulus, that you are actually incorporating that stimulus, um, that you're, um, you know, you've got good examples in your responses, that you, you, you understand exactly what's required. It is super important that you deconstruct the question, take some time to, you know, highlight some key words within the question, know the parameters around what's required in the question, um, really making sure that you understand very, very clearly what it is that you have to write. And also that you actually use HSC content, not prelim content. It's really important that you engage with HSC content. And I think writing then a very clear plan, um, and you've mentioned that before, a plan is very important whether that is a two mark response in a, in a, in a section two structured sec question or your 20 mark essay. If you have a very clear plan, then that will come through um, in the structure of your written response. Um, and so the cohesiveness of your argument will be very clear to the marker. The other thing too with the stimulus, even if the question doesn't require, if it doesn't tell you that you should use it, you should always incorporate it. If it's there, if it's on the page, part of the question, that's an indication to you that you need to incorporate it into your response. It's very important. Um, and the verbs, Diane, that you mentioned, um, I think students can help themselves a lot if they have a, create a little word bank. You could even do it as an activity um, between, you know, as a study group activity. If you've got a few friends that um, in your class that you study with together, you get about six or seven, eight words. You know, if I'm explaining, these are the sorts of words that I would be using or phrases that I would be using. So you, you're, so, you, you're preparing a little bit, but you're not make creating a prepared response and learning that by heart. Um, that is never, never a good idea. But there are certain preparations that you can make, a definition of your um, sacred, uh, your significant practice, for example. If you've got a definition of what that is with some scripture in there to back that up, you can use that then in a variety of ways. You just manipulate that so that it actually fits the question that's being asked on the day. A couple of times you've mentioned section two and, and a two mark response. Where that's happened in past papers, it's been a dependent question that follows it. So say Christianity, question A, part I, with outline or identify a religious practice, significant practice, with an I-I, using your A-I practice, so maybe you did named baptism in the first one, what are you supposed to do in the second one that differentiates it from the first one? 
you're really building on that first mm-hmm. answer. So if you know if it is an outline of practice, for example, and you've done that in AI, then the next part of the question is you need to show more depth. You're building on what you've already spoken mm-hmm. about. You're not introducing something new. It's a, it's about engaging with what you've already put on the paper and building on it and showing greater depth of knowledge within that second part of the question. The second part of the question often follows, if it's just outline of practice, then it probably comes around significance Mm. to community or individual or even um, something along the lines of beliefs. So knowing your syllabus is really critical in that instance. Uh, But I think the important point is too that if you've said baptism in part AI and you go on to talk about marriage in part AII, nothing that you write is actually going to get you any marks because there is nothing, even though we do mark positively, uh, there's nothing there that links to baptism. So you have to be very careful in your reading time that you completely understand how the structured, um, section two structured responses are actually put together and where that 15 marks is allocated.